Hello everyone, this is Andrew with Spark Finance. And for today's big question we have, is the earth overpopulated to the point where we will be unable to produce enough food to feed everybody now or in the future? Have we reached Earth's carrying capacity? Are all the resources being used up just because we have too many people here? That's the question. Now, there are a lot of people that feel that way and that there are just too many humans on the Earth and it is kind of offsetting the natural balance of things. And that's why people are starving and suffering. There are even some movies that use this as a central concept or idea of the movie, such as Soylent Green produced a little while ago, but that's the core concept of the movie. And even a Marvel movie, Avengers Infinity War, with the idea of Thanos and what he is trying to achieve. Basically, they want to decrease the population to make it so that we will have enough food and resources to be able to feed everyone on the planet. Everybody, or I should say a lot of the people that have the idea think that that's the solution, is that we simply need to reduce the population to a more sustainable level. But is that really the answer? Well, the economic reality is a little different and depends on perspective. But we are not currently at that point of overpopulation of the earth where we are not able to produce enough food and it is going to lead to mass starvation. That is simply not true. Actually, diminishing the population would more likely lead to a lower standard of living for the person on average in the world and it would lead to more famine and starvations. So basically it would have the opposite effect than what the people that thought that was the solution would be. I mean, they, they basically had it completely backward here. Now, why is it wrong though? That's the important question to answer. The idea that Thanos can just come in, snap his fingers and get rid of half the people in the universe and then everything would just be in this perfect balance. Now, that is based on an economic fallacy that was brought up some time ago. So to go into this a little further here, we have to talk about the Malthusian trap. An Englishman named Thomas Robert Malthus, he came up with this idea when he wrote an essay on the principle of population in 1798. So that was uh, over 200 years ago and now that essay has a lot of importance for today when people are seeing movies like this and seeing the same concepts again of saying that there's too much population on earth. His basic idea here is that he made an assumption that the population is increasing at a much faster rate than food production and it will lead to mass starvation and a lower standard of living. That will be the result of this. He argued that we need to halt population growth to stop from having a catastrophe of people starving in the future. So that's a very scary concept, especially for people back in 1798 to kind of comprehend there. Well, at the time actually, let's say 1800 for example, there were 1 billion people on planet Earth. And somehow, every year since then, the population kept going up and people ended up actually having a better standard of living on average and less people dying of starvation over time. So it was the complete opposite of what Malthus said. This concept was, well, became known as the Malthusian draft there because Malthus missed that even though you have labor and land and you have a fixed amount of land, all of the technological innovations and new productivity techniques for the agricultural business actually increased the food production. So it wasn't that the food creation or production rate stayed the same. A similar occurrence also happened in 1968 when the population of the earth was 3.5 billion people. So in 1968, this book came out called The Population Bomb. And everybody got really scared. There was a lot of news articles about this. You can look them up today. And it said that by the year 2000, there was going to be 7 billion people on the earth. And there is just no way to feed that many people. So there would be mass starvations around the world, even in the United States. There simply wouldn't be enough food able to be produced to feed all the United States citizens. Yet things still improved until the time we are in now, which is well past the year 2000, and the population is currently at 7.6 billion. And somehow the US still has a surplus of food. And on average, 
things are getting better. If you look at global extreme poverty over a long scale, it has been going down at the same time as the population has been going up. The food production rates have been going up actually faster than the population. So you have the standard of living going up, the food production going up faster than the population. I mean, it sounds pretty good, right? We actually have more people dying of obesity-related concerns rather than starvation in today's world. And that's been so for about the past 20 years. So uh, is, this, is this true? I mean, maybe we're just looking at the, the wrong data here. Do we actually have enough food right now to feed everybody in the world? Because we know there are areas where people are malnourished or potentially starving. Well, according to the UN and other reports, yes, we do have enough food to feed everybody in the world. And the reason there are some people starving or malnourished in the world is because of a resource allocation problem and different types of societies and economic systems rather than the ability to actually produce enough food. We have that ability to produce the food for everybody to survive on the earth. Now, why has the world fared better with more population, which is the antithesis to these books, right? It's the opposite of what they thought was going to happen. One of the hard concepts to understand about wealth and the economy is that it is not a zero-sum game. One does not have to take from one area over here to get a gain on your side over here. It's not always like you're taking from something to gain something. There is mutually beneficial relationships and all people can gain at the same time. As the world's population has gone up, the overall standard of living has gone up. If you look at GDP per capita around the world, it has gone up. People on average are richer now than they were in the past. That is the difference. That is what Malthus missed. When people have more money, you can buy more food. Mal Malthus thought that the opposite would occur. He thought people's wealth would deteriorate as population increase and the amount of resources would be running scarce. So the more people there are, the more producers there are. That's another concept here that's important to keep in mind. Having more people is actually a net benefit to society because every other person is going to be there in the world producing something that is going to make the economy of goods and services bigger. If we reduce the population, we will actually impoverish the future. There will be less scientists, less entrepreneurs, and less farmers that will go and be able to come up with the new technologies and innovations that we need to keep growing and becoming better as human beings. The reason why food production was able to keep up with population was because of those technologies and innovations that happened in that sector to meet the demand of the increasing population. Crop yields were greatly increased with the concepts of irrigation and farming machinery. They used to have to do it by hand. Now we have GPS tracking where you can lay out the alignment of your crops. We have crop rotation and water track, weather tracking and predictions and better modifications of seeds used in agriculture. So there's a lot of things here that added to the overall yield on a per acre basis for farmland. One of the reasons why China was able to jump so high ahead in population count was because they had the early, the early advent of using irrigation and increasing the yield output on their rice paddies. So with an abundance of food, they were able to have a larger population. Now there's a lot of farmland in the United States and around the world being used and there's a lot of room still for improvements. Some people say that we're running out of arable land, but the thing is, is that you can also increase the yields on the current crops or, you know, there's even the advent of vertical farming potentially. So why then does starvation and famine still exist? Shouldn't it be eradicated then? There are examples in modern times where there are starvation or famines present, but it's usually in isolated areas and for a specific period of time. Economists explain these situations as an economic distribution problem rather than a problem of the world not being able to produce enough of the quantity of food required. So there's enough food there. The problem is the right, the people that need it are not getting it. There was actually an economist, Amartya Sen, it was a economist in 1981, he was writing about this and he studied a 1953 famine in Bengal where you had 
a lot of people that were starving and at the same time people in other areas around there were doing fine. And if you look at how this works, a person basically takes their labor and they trade their labor for money. So they trade labor for money and then they take the money and then they buy food. Now, the problem here, if there is a change in the overall price of their labor or the price of food and the wages are not able to afford the minimum, minimum amount of food that a person requires, that is where you run into trouble. You can run into a situation where a person or people are starving even when there is plenty of food available simply because they cannot afford it. This most often occurs in war-torn areas or areas of high inflation due to economic mismanagement. And it, you have to take a look at the factors of this, right? So in his studies, he showed that the famines were rarely due to an absolute scarcity of food, but in situations when food was unavailable to people who need them the most. There are ways now to alleviate some of the suffering in these scenarios, but you have to look at it from the correct approach. You can't just say we're not producing enough food in the world, let's lower the population. That will not solve the problem. Now, if we look at it from the correct perspective here, if you're looking at it from like, how can we actually resolve the distribution problem and get the food to the people that need it, now you can work on potential solutions. So where does this leave us exactly? In the end, having more people on the earth, whether they are you know, the next Albert Einstein or they are just your average Joe, all of those bodies and minds are able to put themselves to work to kind of further address the problems that are plaguing society. So by having more people, you have more people that can attack the problems and offer potential solutions. Limiting or reducing the population through unnatural means will result in a lower standard of living on average for everyone rather than a higher standard of living. So in economics, it is dangerous to think of things as basically a fixed pie, where you have a fixed pie here and everybody's trying to grab their slice before it runs out and there's only so much to go around. You can't really think of it in those terms because in economics, it's very dynamic. There's a lot of things moving in different directions at the same times and it is an ever-growing pie of goods and resources that constantly gets larger with innovation, productivity, people creating new things in the marketplace. Wealth is created in an economy through innovations and productivity. So you don't have to steal it from someone else. Now there are bad things that happen, of course, but you don't have to take from someone else here to have a benefit to everybody else in the society here. Think of a simple concept like, say, a refrigerator or gas or electric stoves, right? Those, they greatly enhance our ability to preserve and cook food and this is going along with the theme of Malthus and the population, they made everything better for everyone in the world by having them created. It wasn't like everybody else suffered because we have refrigerators now. This was clearly a way to increase our capacity to store food. They used to have you know, ice boxes, and before that they had to use salt to preserve meat. Now we have refrigerators and freezers that can store it for a prolonged period and able to get distributed to the right areas faster before it is perished or the perishable food goes bad. Now, those overall innovations increase the size of the pie of the economy. And that's, you know, pie that has more slices for everybody to enjoy. The Malthusian trap is an important concept to keep in mind when thinking about the future and population in particular. Malthus had thought that the gains in income that a person had through new technologies in an economy would be outpaced by population growth. And that would result in perpetual lowering of the standard of living. You'd have less and less money to go around. Turns out that the opposite was true here. And that has been going on for about 223 years since that original concept came about. So as the popul population has increased, the standard of living per person has continued to increase. And if you're looking at the GDP per capita, you can see that's happening around the globe. globe. The extreme poverty level is down. It's not just in the United States, but all around the world as a whole. So we can see here that as this trend continues and as we learn more about economics, we can kind of get rid of these economic fallacies that snapping your fingers and making half of the population of the universe disappear is not going to actually be a benefit to society. So I think it's important to kind of review those different concepts 
and see how to address the real problems that we have in society. Because of course there are always going to be problems and there are going to be people suffering and we want to do our best to alleviate that and to alleviate that you have to know what is causing the problem. Thanks for watching everyone. If you want to check out some other videos on e economics, economics, if you want to watch some other videos on economics, business, investing, check out the other videos on my channel and enjoy the rest of your day.